Hey guys, I got a quick little video for you. I want to test the distortion of the TPA 3116 amplifier. Actually, working on some other projects, but uh, I need to get a video out, so I'll do this one real quick. Oh, we're right next to the snicker. Hi, Tech. Really? Tell us about it. Oh, he wants to go to bed. Okay, anyway, got the box of O amps here. Box O amplifiers. I gotta recover my parts off of that one. Ah, here's that one, the TPA 3116. Take a look at that one. Remember this thing, LM3886, piece of junk. I gotta recover my parts off of this board. Oh, that Class A amp, another piece of junk. Now, there's another one I want to look at, too. But yeah, this is my Box O amplifiers. Okay, got the amplifier hooked up to the signal source, running through the preamp. If you remember, I got a base level reading off of that of like 0.0045% or something like that. So I'm using an 8 ohm load because this amplifier, you know, the coils they selected didn't work well with 4 ohm loads. It rolled off pretty significantly at higher frequencies. So amps really meant for 8 ohm loads. So I'll test it here. Uh, I'll run it at 16 volts over there on channel 2. And uh, connect it to the computer. Use the Arda software again. Check the 1 kilohertz distortion and the intermodulation at 18 to 19 kilohertz. Uh, like I say, limitations of my equipment. I can't really test um, distortion at high frequencies because of the limits there but you know intermodulation distortion is born out of uh, nonlinearities anyway so we get similar results okay so here's the one kilohertz signal that's the uh, one kilohertz fundamental and our overtones or or harmonics kind of strange that one's missing here I see that's two, three, four. The fifth one's missing, and then there's uh, another group and some missing ones. But anyhow, I ignore this, but this is the one we're most interested in. These are close to each other. Well, they're, they're the same because the distortion nodes are so much higher than the noise floor that they're going to be that way. They're going to be the same. 0.16 so you know it's not bad it's not as good as the uh, like the LM 1875 or the TDA 2050 we looked at but you know it's uh, still low enough that I don't see any issues okay so let's look at the uh, intermodulation distortion okay we got our 18 and 19 kilohertz tones up on the screen there for the intermodulation distortion test and uh, yeah, we got uh, a one kilohertz node and uh, the sideband tones as well. The upper sideband tones are calculated for as well. They're accounted for, it's just that I don't have the screen set up to uh, show those. But anyhow, 0.3 percent. Actually impressed. I thought it would do worse. I thought it would fall down with the intermodulation test, especially with those high frequency tones, but it keeps it together. You know, it may not be hi-fi or anything like that, but 0.3%. I always question if anybody can really hear distortion in music below 1%. And this is uh, quite a bit less than that. So, you know, it's doing pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do now is test this at a lower signal level. To, whoa! 
that thing's pretty hot. That's what I get for sticking my fingers on a hot resistor. You know, it's like the insides of a hot pocket. It'll burn you. <laughs> but yeah, I want. I was testing it out at a higher signal level, and I want to check it out at lower signals, see if the uh, distortion holds up as well. Okay, I cut the level in half. It was about 8 volts before, and now it would be about half of that. 4 volts RMS. Yeah, it's about the same. And maybe dropped a little bit. I also checked the intermodulation, and it was at 0.31, so it really didn't change there. So, yeah, at least it doesn't shoot up higher at lower signal levels, which, you know, that can happen sometimes. Okay, I'm going to test this amp as well and uh, report back at the end here. I might shoot some video if there's really any major difference, but I um, don't expect there to be, but you never know. Well, actually, this one has a little more distortion. The other one was like 0.16 or something. This one's 0.3 at the 1 kilohertz tone. So let's go ahead and take a look at the intermodulation. Okay, the intermodulation is about the same, maybe just a touch higher, but yeah, at one kilohertz it had uh, about double the distortion of the first amp, but you know, it's still under half a percent. It's not bad at all. I was kind of expecting these little amps to fall flat especially on the intermodulation test. But yeah, they, they did okay. Here's a comparison of the LM1875 and TDA2050 I measured the other day. And uh, yeah, they're quite a bit less, especially the 2050. Even the 1875 is an order of magnitude less. So yeah, there you go. I mean, they're uh, not hi-fi or anything, but... Like I say, I don't think distortion is an issue with them. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.